Hi, welcome back to Books, a monthly video series. I'm going to dive straight in with some of these books. I've not read too much this month, not have very much time. I uh, hope you guys are okay. Hope you've had lots of time to read lots of good books. Let me know more in the comments. You know, I love to have a chat. I'm going to start with something that just came in the post. This new edition of Normal People, which has come out from the Faber Members Club. If you're not a member, do sign up. There's great newsletter events and these sort of special editions that they bring out. This is just a lovely edition of a great book. It's a tale of two people who are at university in Dublin. That's about as much as I can tell you without kind of spoiling the story or giving away its secret, which is that it's just about two normal people, really. It's got a lovely little quote on the back. It's really nice. The few things that made me want to pick this up. My partner actually worked on the TV adaptation of this book, which I loved. And if you haven't seen it, please go see it. It's on the BBC. And the second reason is, look at this typography. Look at that. Look at that. And then in the back just stunning. But if you've not read Normal People, I think it's worth a read. Sally Rooney also has another book that's just come out, uh, Beautiful World Where Are You, which is getting absolute rave reviews and waiting for the paperback to come out so I can read it or pick it up in the library. Uh, I know it will be good. She's, she's a fantastic writer. She's worth checking out. And what else do we have? I have been reading this, The Hours Have Lost Their Clock by Grafton Tanner. This was kindly gifted to me by Repita. Thank you, Ellie at Repita for this. Please let me design your next cover. It's an essay on nostalgia and time and the way that we think about time and history and how that is utilised, how nostalgia as an emotion is utilised in politics, advertising and just in our day-to-day -day lives and what we can do to kind of take control over the effects of it on us. It's a really interesting essay. It kind of revolves around the before and after 9-11. If you're familiar with that kind of criticism and you like that sort of thing, then you might like this. It's made me think about nostalgia in a way that I hadn't. And if you know me, then you know that I love all things about time. So that's very enjoyable for me as a topic. And that's probably why Repeater thought of me for this book. Look at how much of this book is notes. All of this is the, is the references, all of this bit. How wild is that? That's how well referenced this is. Yeah, really good read. Last time I mentioned that Will at Peninsula Press had sent me some things that I was going to read. I've read them. It was a very enjoyable experience. Thank you again, Will. Uh, so first, Weird Fucks by Lynn Tillman. This novella is fantastic. It's a punchy little read. It's so quick. Because there is so little of it, each sentence is really working hard to pack a punch. As you would imagine, Weird Fucks follows a protagonist as they go through weirder and weirder sexual encounters. It's very globetrotting and there's some really incredible killer sentences that just stop you dead in your tracks. Are really memorable and indicative of early Lynn Tillman and what she would go on to kind of do. It's refreshing the way the men in the book are written. It's the men are written in a kind of interesting simpering way uh, while our protagonist is kind of this vibrant, multi-dimensional, interesting, magnetic character that's moving through the world. She's more vulnerable than maybe she first appears, but the overriding headline is, this is a woman who's having so many interesting experiences. I kind of wanted to be her. I thought that her way of moving through the world was so exciting. The novella constantly surprises you in the language, in the turns it takes, the unlikely sex, the disturbing sex, the completely unusual sex. The men are all so different in this novel and she kind of flicks through them like a flavour profile. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely worth picking up if you're into interesting and unusual novellas and literature. Uh, secondly, uh, Replace Me, Amber Hussain, still working through this. A really fantastically written essay on the fear of being replaced with a philosophical slant. There's some literary stuff in there. It focuses a lot on work and the fear of being replaced at work, either by automation or through a kind of mythos of scarcity, which I thought was quite interesting and timely coming out of COVID. I think a lot of people are feeling that in their jobs. There's a kind of uh, late stage capitalist notion that every worker is replaceable and therefore that suppresses the need to fight for any 
rights or to revolutionise the workplace in any way. It's just your job is so low skilled and so easily done by anyone that if you revolt against your employer or against the system, then you will just be taken out and replaced with somebody else who can put up with it. And I think that's a really powerful sentiment to dive into and have a look at in this. I know there's kind of a plethora of work-related non-fiction books coming out right now exploring why we work, how we work, how we could change the way that we work to make ourselves happier. Hussein writes really brilliantly. That's the main thing here. She writes in a way that's really gripping. So uh, it's a really enjoyable read, even though the topic is quite depressing for a lot of it, especially if you see yourself in these descriptions of an unhappy workplace at times. Finally, from Peninsula Press, I've just finished Josh Cohen's Losers. I loved it. Josh Cohen, as always, blends psychoanalytic discussion with literature, with philosophy, and it's just such an enthralling combination to think about how we think and feel and how that's reflected in art and literature and how that can be brought back into our philosophical way of thinking about life. It's just a brilliant, brilliant thesis. It's, it's quick and it dives straight into what it means to philosophically be losing versus being a winner in a dichotomy and then also uh, suggests a way of humility becoming a way of life for us so suggests that maybe we stop thinking of losing as being the alternative to winning and, and there being only one winner and then a mass of losers and instead think of losing as a rich textured emotional experience that can give us a lot of things the same as winning or maybe even think of it as a crucial element to life a crucial kind of emotion that we have to go through and there's some brilliant literary analysis in there as well uh, he talks about freud obviously and also kafka there's a brilliant section on ben Lerner's the topeka school which is a really good novel as well and worth looking at josh cohen writes about trump and the Tory party kind of eliminating the idea of being associated with losing through the manipulation of factual material or actually the dismissal of fact finding. There's a really interesting point where Cohen is describing how often Trump will say something and it will clearly be a lie, but it's not a lie that can be fact checked. The reality check or the fact check that will be put out to correct what's been said won't do anything because Trump is not playing at all on the same field as fact checkers and people who believe in objective truth. Losers is a great kind of manifesto for how to live with humility as well. So that was really interesting and I, I think it's worth reading for that, especially if you're interested in politics and in philosophy. I also just finished Jen Winston's debut, Greedy. It just came out. It's a personal memoir which combines essays on bisexuality. There's a lot of gender exploration in there too. If you are bisexual or you think you might not be straight, this might be a great book for you to read. There's loads of funny stories that I saw myself in as much as anything. And, and overall it has a really positive message, which is that it's okay to be both. It's okay to be everything or nothing or something in between one or another. And it actually is a powerful argument for dismissing the binary and embracing confusion, ambiguity, liminality. I think that really spoke to me and it made me feel kind of a mini revelation about how I just exist in the liminal and that's fine. <laughs> and that was really nice. So yeah, I really recommend uh, Greedy. Thinking about starting maybe a new little segment here on zines. I was the president of the Zine Society when I was at university and I really just love the art and community of self-publication. I recently received this amazing Halloween flavoured zine. This is from Shyburns, a collective in Manchester. You can subscribe to them on Patreon to support their work and I've put some links below to where you can find them. Isn't this fantastic? The thing that impresses me most about these is the quality of the printing and design. The content is incredible too, but I love the way these things look. These guys just really have passion for craft and that is what zine making is all about really. I'll just show you some of the pages. Here's 
a reluctant review of Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, I'll share another zine next month, but yeah, go pick it up, go check it out. And that's it from me, really. I'll be back next month with some more books and hopefully another zine. And in the meantime, tell me what you're reading in the comments, message me on Instagram, pop up on Tumblr, uh, and I will see you soon. Okay, take care.